Hello everyone, this is William with CommanderCast.com here game number two of the Alpha Build with Alpha Sin, Guardian Angel, and the Alliance Build game number two. Did I ever say that? I already said that. And we're here today with a very, very nice hand. We got two planes and Keldorn Outpost and a Jewel Amulet. I like this quite a bit. We're going to keep this. So we see quite a few cards that we haven't actually seen yet. We're going to be finding... To this looks like a much better game than what we had last time. We've got Sequar Deathkeeper, Rabinia Soul Singer, and Malsham Wanderer. The value train. All right then. So right off the bat, what am I looking at? I'm looking at playing jeweled amulet into planes. Let's see. Yep. Just going to uh, F8 here until it's our turn. There we go. Yeah. So jeweled amulet into planes, and that's going to go into the Keldorn outpost on the next turn. So yeah, we should be able to power out a. Soul Grail, I think. So we're going to go ahead, play the Jeweled Amulet, activate, pale white. And that's going to pass our turn. So we'll have two mana next turn. We can go ahead, play the, uh, tap the planes for mana, play an outpost, tap the outpost for mana, play a Soul Grail, and that will give us two mana to do something. I guess. Oh, I guess it... Eh, I don't know, whichever. At least we'll get the Caldorn Outpost out early. Which may or may not suck. We'll see. The other idea is that this is actually a great placeholder for the uh, Commander Sphere. Which I almost completely forgot about. I love Commander Sphere. It's such a nice card. Oh, but I'll share it. There we go. That answers it perfectly. So what we're going to do is tap this for mana, play a Keldon Outpost, sack of planes. We're going to... Oh, it only taps for... Two. Okay. Tap for three. Tap Soul Grail. And then we play, we're going to play a white. And then we'll tap that for a Banalish Hero. And pass turn. c c, -c, -c combo yeah, Keldor Outpost only makes one mana, which is important distinction. We I actually didn't realize that. So we do set ourselves back a bit. But we do have some rocks out, I guess? That was cool and all, but I'm actually a little concerned now. Just a wee bit. Um, we're going to go play planes, and we're going to have to start making... Soldiers off of that if we want to keep up with anything at all. Did not think that through. Did not read my cards. That's important. So, Sequar dropping down a second temple, going up with the Soul Rain, tapping out and F8. Meanwhile, Rubinia plays Uvawald Mysteries. Whenever a non token creature you told dies, investigate. And whenever you sack a clue, put a 1 1 white human creature soldier onto the battlefield. That's a duo from Shadows over Innistrad. I like the synergy between that and Sakura Tribelder quite a bit. You don't lose your body, and you get a land. And a clue. <laughs> Meanwhile, Washroom playing the Proteus Staff. Alright, buddy, I don't think we have anything to worry about over on our end. Um, let's go ahead. Am I scared of the Soul Rain? Or not? Um, just gonna go back past turn. We can hold up this enchant for, for anything important. We can also use the jeweled amulet to charge up. And then we'll have four mana that we could use to... I'll have to remember to auto-queue the overall mysteries. <clears throat> so if we draw into a land, we can play the Sarah Angel. I kind of want to get some board presence, though. Like, at least with the Banny, then we can go ahead and shove all the, th the damage onto one creature, maybe. Blight of Woodfall. Blight of Woodland. Searching for two basics to put into play. Tapped. It's pretty good. Grabs two swamps. Only color they were missing. Um, hmm.
All right then. So how are we gonna do this? Hmm. I do want to err on the side of at least getting the jeweled amulet ready. So we'll go ahead and we'll tap our soul grail to give the jeweled amulet a little bit of a charge. Oh, survival of the fittest. There's a card we can't let survive. <clears throat> And let's see, what, how much you want to say that they're just going to use it to grab an e so they can get it back? Gotta wait. Gotta wait <clears throat> for the last possible second. Because history of white. Uh, let's see, Oracle of Moldiah. It's pretty good. <laughs> More land drop. Uh, that Proteus Staff is really scary now. Especially with the Mouse Wanderer. I, I know what the Proteus Staff is capable of doing. But that's Survival of the Fittest. That's honestly just not something we can let stand. Although, with the way this is going, let's see, that's the top of their deck. You know what, let's see, go ahead, tap. Hmm, <laughs> this is very, very concerning, actually. I'm not sure which one I want to, I need to do. So we're just going to hold on to this enchant for now. Chances are they may deal with each other. Uh, so... Update. That's a nada. We don't have, really have anything in the grievance in particular either, but... We'll drop a Tormod's Crypt and pass turn. And then regret losing a land. On the one hand, we can still use, out, we can still use a Plains and Soul Grail to power out the outpost. So that's what we're going to start doing now. All right then, so Sequar playing Dragon Skull Summit. What do they got? I think they want to send out, start set, putting up engine pieces, right? Because Sequar seems like an engine commander. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, put a three-one black and red graveborn creature token on the battlefield, with haste onto the battlefield. That token doesn't go away. So you want to have things that can loop. No, they're just running the commander out there. All right. Shadowborn Apostles. Ah, there we go. It's a Shadowborn. It's Shadowborn Apostle Sequar. Now suddenly we're afraid. Very, very afraid. Kind of want to give her that survival though. But if I do that, I won't have mana for the Keldon Apostles, and they didn't use it. Interestingly enough, so they must really like what they have in their hand. All right, running the sandbar. I can't wait till we have cycle lands. Oh, that's the thing, though. We had circles of protection in the future. Let's see. Oh, someone's asking about the deck. Just want to see how the deck evolves as I had says chronologically. So far, it is evolving slowly. 
slowly. We lack power. We lack card advantage. Right now we lack mana. <sighs> we just need a land tax. Oh, there's the Edwall Illuminator. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, it investigate. I like that so much. Let's see, tap target creature does not untap. During this extra goes on tap step. Tapping Sequoia, I think? Yeah. Get some clues going. And they're tapped out, so they can't actually use their survival of the fittest right now. Which means that's this is actually an optimal time to, to pop it. If I wasn't just so dark, darn afraid of Mouse and Wanderer, if they drop any sort of mana rock, that's going away. One, two, three, four, five, six. Top of their deck is a Mystical Tutor. So Oracle of Maldow not really getting them the additional you know, card advantage they want. Hmm. Mouse and decks ramp so heavily. I want to get rid of the Survival of the Fittest. This is just a really, really good card. But the Mouse and Wanderer. Yeah, see, that's not a target I can pop. Hmm. We're just gonna start building up our presence. I'll trade holding on to this enchant for building up our board save with creatures on turns that we can't do anything otherwise. Let's see. Set every two weeks. Let's see, exploit. Let's see, return to their hand. Oh. <clears throat> so, when an explosive creature returns to their hand, all creatures must control with toughness less than the exploded creature's toughness. Is he exploiting? That's important. <clears throat> Is he actually going to sack the oracle? No, he doesn't. Ha ha! Alright then, let's go ahead and finally use our brand new outpost. Alright, so we made our first soldier off of outpost. That wasn't so bad, was it? Now we need land. That's kismet. That's actually not the worst right now. That will slow things down. Yep. Now we just keep an eye on the graveyards. Deck lacks power right now. Alright then. Now, Kismet's going to slow everything down, hopefully long enough so that we can hit some more lands. Next turn, we'll have to set up the Jeweled Amulet again. The other good news is that this does slow down the Mousham Wanderer. Yeah, Blue and Black definitely seem like the strongest, and those are going to be my next projects. Search your library for ah, uh, transmuting the drift of phantoms. Nice. So he's definitely not grabbing a creature. Otherwise, he would have just used survival of fittest. Unless he needed the let's see. Unless Rubinia needed the extra one. Unless she needed it. Magnifying glass. Three mana rock. Four mana tap. Investigate. Someone really wanted to go all in on that clues thing.
Ooh, Dead Eye Navigator. That's important to get rid of. Let's see. So what's oh Terracidon. That's no bueno. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Of course, Pretty Staff can just turn one of these things into a Terracidon. And I don't like what's gonna happen if that happens. Ah, uh, looks like we are. Do it's gonna happen. Yep, it's happening. Trusted on on the stack. Yep. This will not be pleasant. Not one bit. Let's see. So you would pop what the Soul Ring, the Kismet. I guess if you really wanted to kick me, the Keldon Outpost. Yep. So, Proteus Staff is now done. Gonna go to Terrastodon. Oh, Survive of the Fist. Yeah, or could you just get rid of the clues? Turns out the clues were elephants all along. And oh, I like that the tokens are actually different art. Yep, Kismet and two of their enchantments. Ouch. The good news is we do get elephants. So, not bad. That sucks, but it could have been a lot worse. They're playing all the fetch lines, apparently. And they've got their three duels. That... No, they don't. They're missing a duel. Let's see if Tropical Island, Volcanic Island, so the red-green one, so Taiga? I want to say it's Taiga. Hmm. Alright, we're ready to claim that she will have her revenge on Master Wanderer. The clues are fine. You just can't find any. And we're tapped out. Well, these just turn the power of a drill amulet again. Ah, uh, see, is it about tapped? Yeah, guess it should have, but it didn't. Oh uh, well, Soul Ring that will help us out quite a bit. All right, so how do we want to do this? Go ahead and use a Soul Grail. Now we got ourselves a Soul Ring. Oh well. So let's see if we can go ahead and hold stuff up right now because we have one, two. Three, four. We only have four mana. We'll have to charge up the amulet again. Is there a way for us to charge the amulet and make a dude? Because this requires white and the white. Although. Let's see. Yeah, so we can charge the jewel amulet. It'll just make colorless. Then next time we use it. Which is better than it not making any mana at all. Hmm. Of course, Sekwar is over there building up their apostles. Sekwar's slowly building it for us, but Nasher is just like a. As soon as that bubble pops, everything's gonna come flooding out. Let's see. Keep going. Just keep going. Right now, the Banalish Hero can keep, help keep things away. You've seen Banalish Hero both games so far. Maybe now that we got more banding, we don't have to worry about playing a 1 1 with banding. It's a thought. Banalish Hero is, is rather cheap. Cord for 7. 
Yeah, there's nothing we can do about that. What do you got for seven? Avenger Zendikar? No! Amiria Shepherd! And with a land, we can get back. Let's see, any non land permit to hand. Um, actually, you know what? Pop, 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 pop. We need to pop the, pop the crib, pop the crib, pop the crib. Too much value, too much value. What? Um... Okay. Everything's out of grave, everything's out of grave. Sorry, friend. Too much value. Also, you were playing in the Mirror Shepherd when there was a Tormod Crypt on board. And there was a Deadite Navigator in there. Let's be real here. We can't let you have silly things with the Deadite Navigator. Nope. And it's a Bicenter. And there's PN Kira Nalar. Coming in, making their Thopters. Making their Whirly Birds. Coming to Kaladesh near you. And we got Manival on top of Malsham's library. Pretty staff targeting a Thopter. That's value. Oh, it's going to be a Dead Eye Navigator. That's really, really bad. I could disenchant the Thopter, but at this point, no. We're disenchanting the Proteus Staff. We have to. That's it. it means it's going to eat our white source, which means we can use a white source to charge the jeweled amulet at least. Um, yep, it's going to bomb with either Terastodon or Pia and Kieran Nalar. Yep, pair with the Siege Game Parents. And we've got P Imperial Recruiter next. Working really tight on budget here. Alright then, so we're going to go ahead, hit the Proteus Staff. Yeah, more or less. Then we're gonna charge with. Ah oh, man, did it put colors on it? It did. That sucks. Reprisal. That will get rid of an artifact at least. No, we could get your power four greater. Hello. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six man available. That's not a lot. So if I were to do that, then we need a white. Yep, so white and white, but that's not going to be enough to do that. So we are just going to have to use the jeweled amulet, I think. And if we play our cards right, though. We can wait until Rubinia's turn to play Reprisal. And someone else might be doing it. Let's see. Sequar dropping the Eternal Witness. 
Getting back a bite of wood hell. Yeah, if we want to do this, we're going to make a soldier and do that. I mean, I guess we could just not keep the jeweled amulet up. Do that. One, two, that leaves us with four mana. <clears throat> so not enough to really do a lot. Ooh, they're investigating. But why would they do that now? It's gonna have the first turn of return, so there's lightning greaves. They have a whole lot of tokens, but why? Why are they investigating? Yeah, they'll put on the Emeria Shepherd, which I'm fine with that. It doesn't have any targets right now. The real big thing is going to be getting rid of that dead end navigator. We cannot afford to let this go. We get combat. Yep, that's fine. Go to attacks. And angels flying over. That's fine. Yep. And you know what? We're going to go with reprisal on Dead Eye Navigator. Because we really need to. Um, Alright then. Let's get rid of the Dead Eye Navigator. Yay! We did stuff! Dead Eye Navigator is a pretty relevant target. And not letting them untap with it, that's really good for us. Of course, now because our dual amulet doesn't have white on it, we can't use it to actually make a dude. I mean, I guess we could have tapped it in the soul ring, but that just feels like lost value. Search your deck for a creature with power 2 or less, reveal it and put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. Yep. Alright, so recruiter goes off. What are they gonna grab? Right now Nest Invader's on top. See Trinket Mage. Alright, so what's Trinket Mage gonna do? Mo doesn't want to let me keep the, the creatures out. Tricky Mage is going to search for... It's going to search out. A top. Alright, buddy. You want to play a top in a 25 minute game? It's your call. Although that is a cool interaction between the command sphere and the top. You can go ahead, pay for it at the top, you know, set the card on top, sack the sphere <coughs> to instant draw without losing the tempo of your top. And they're not swinging. Okay, that's good. I don't have anything else on my turn, though. Ah, who would have thought that jewel amulet was going to mess us up a little harder than we thought? But we do have three, four, five. Yes, we can go ahead and Sarah Angel here. And I'm using the jeweled amulet here because I want to clear off that charge counter. Because it says you can only have like one. Yeah, I think it's only there are no charge counters on jeweled amulet. So we've got our Sarah Angel. Hopefully now we can go ahead and start producing a little more mana to actually you know make the outpost matter. Let's see. Yep, 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 yep. So 
Sekwer, popping Blightwood Hill for more lands. That worries me a little bit. They've only got two cards in hand. But you have to wonder what they have. So now they've got four Shadowborn Apostles. Actually, what am I even doing? I'm just going to F6 through people's turns. I literally have nothing else I can do. Alright then, so Rubinia. She's got like five clues though. So is she going to play Tommyo's Journal now? That makes sense. Tide Spell Tyrant. Whenever you cast a spell, return target permanent to its owner's hand. It's pretty good. And it's target permanent, right? So it is. You can bounce lands, you filthy animal. But it's whenever you cast a spell. Right now they're running on empty, so th those clues might be getting there. And let's see. Yep. We've got nine damage hidden to the way of the Maelstrom Wanderer. Not sure why they didn't swim with the spirit, though. I guess it could have eaten a thopter. Although the Master Wander Tree is coming up, isn't it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, they've got enough. Warp World! Oh, good lord. That would actually. That would actually be really good for everyone but me. Good lord. Hey, War World is actually just the kind of card that you would want to play on, Mo on Moto. Why? Because it actually takes all... It's so automated. Oh, there's the Palancron. There's the Palancron. Good thing we managed to get rid of the Dead and Evier while we could. Because this is actually going to be disgusting. And we're just going to F6. Because we know what sort of filthy shenanigans are going to happen. We know. We know all your dirty little secrets. Did I navigate in the Palancron combo? If he can get the Dead Eye Navigator back, it just makes all the mana. But then he needs a win condition to go on top of that. Yep, there's Warp World. Shuffle those all permits. They own it to the library. Let's see. So we're going to keep the cards in our hand. And oh my god. This just happened. Let's see then. Each player puts all artifacts, creatures, lands, move this way onto the battlefield, then does the same for each enchantment card, then puts all cards revealed this way that weren't put on the battlefield on the bottom of his or her library. Well, we certainly got a lot of lands. We got the Archaeologist, we got the Royal Guard, and we got Force Field Moat and six lands, including the Bizarre Baghdad. Meanwhile, over here, we've got a shit ton of Omnath triggers. Oh god, so many triggers. That's actually kind of blinding. And they got the Palancron back. Solemn. Deadwood Tree. Oh, oh, okay. This, this is really bad for us. So Trasodon's obviously going to get rid of the, the moat in the force field that we just got out. Damn shame. Damn shame. There's also a Far the Human Elf, a Nest Invader, Temporal Arbiter. Pay, was it, five mana? Let's see if we can get like, this a little bigger. Yeah, it looks like five mana. Yeah, pay five, shuffle your library. Until the turn for as long as that card remains on top of your library. It's the top card. You may play without paying this mana cost. So for five mana, you can play the top card of your deck. Without paying its mana cost, no less. 
Um, so let's see what Terrasson targets are. Oh, all three! We've got Magnifying Glass, Tanyo's Journal, and Strionic Resonator. There's the Tidespout Tyrant. And the Skullwinder. Ooh, that actually would be really, really nasty. Anyway, we've got Siren Sandy, Zathrid Necromancer, Junior House Guard, Runescar Demon, Shui, and funnily enough, six Shadowborn Apostles. As well as a Volrath Stronghold. Good lord, that's a lot of triggers. That is a lot of triggers. Fortunately, this is why Moto helps out. Magnifying glass, investigate. Well, meanwhile, Ruby has just got all the tap lands. All right, then. So next up, we've got. Temple of Mystery Scrying. So many triggers. What the heck? Also, why wouldn't you do Farhaven Elf before any sort of mystery temples? Grant, I think that might be Rabinia's. Yeah, it's Rabinia's trigger. So now we're resolving Sequar's triggers. Should just be the Bloodfell Case and also the Runescar Demon. The Tutor is going to be relevant. If I were him, it'd probably be a way to refill your hand, so maybe a promised power? So you don't, except you don't have enough mana for that. If you shut up on apostles, probably grab, what, a blood gift demon? Just to refill your hand? That sounds more likely. Now we've got the Psalm Simulacrum. And we're just going to cycle through all of Maelstrom's triggers here. Let's see, going to put a land to play, which triggers Omnath. Now it's going to be a Farhaven out, which will also trigger Omnath. Deadwood True Folk is probably getting back Dead Eye Navigator. Yep, it's getting back Dead Eye Navigator. And Rubinia has seen enough. She scooped. Interesting that. Let's see. Oh, whatever. It's whatever. The Terrasodon. Those triggers do not resolve because the player in question scooped. And now we're just going to get to the point where we get a crap ton of 5-5 five, five elementals from Omnath. Rawr! So much stupid value. Oh my god, the value. I can't stand it. Fortunately, the moat's going to keep him off from attacking off of a Malsham Wanderer. But let's be real here. How long can we reasonably expect anything on here to, you know, survive? The answer? None of it. None of it's going to survive at all. Because with the Dead Eye Navigator in hand, Mousetrap has infinite mana. Infinite mana means infinite reblinking to rest it on after that. Which means casting Mousetrap Wanderer. Which means all of our stuff is destroyed. We have some elephants. But why not just use Mouse and Wanderer and swing for all the damage and straight murder everyone? Yep, there's Mouse and Wanderer. It's a good thing we're F6. Now it's time to just watch the value train roll. Interesting that they didn't go with Dead End Navigator first, though. So this Pyromancer's Goggles, which can copy any red spell, as long as you're using, well, with the mana producers. Then it's Kijiki. 
Alright. So, why well, he's got a bounding crisis in there to go infinite. You could also have Peasant Mind Deceiver X Arch. Or Zealous Conscripts. <sighs> it's pretty wombo combo y. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana potentially. Um, of course, there's also that. And all looks like Sequar has a plan. Sacrifice all the Shadowborns. Yep. Get a Shadowborn Demon. At least that's what I'm assuming. Man, that value train is real. So Shirei is going to bring those apostles back to the battlefield. Let's see. At the beginning of the next end step, I believe. So that will happen. Then Necromancer is going to start making some zombies. Shadowborn Apostles is finally going to finish resolving it. It's probably going to be Shadowborn Demon. So... Overseer the Dam, just as good. Alright, respectable. And that's going to trigger the Overseer of the Damned again. Make another zombie. So the boat is up. And we are alive. For now. For now. And the Siren's Hand is actually going to make us dump our entire hand. I just now realize. Now they still have infinite mana. They have potentially infinite mana. I can't see it, but I don't see any other way they have to make mana other than this Taiga. And literally anything else. Paired with Venser. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Hmm. Really, you usually pair with the Palancron to have infinite mana. Hmm. Well, we lose our Sky Head and our Sustaining Spirit. And our bazaar doesn't do anything. So the real question is, does Master have any other plays right now? And apparently they've got a misplay on their end because they thought that the moat just says, you know, our creatures can't attack. It is. All their creatures say they can't attack. Isn't that glorious? So we're going to have quite a few stacks. Sire's going to strip our hands, but refill Sackwars with Shadowborn Apostles. Ouch. Sire and Sandy's the real deal. Let's see, what Mashem lose, lost, or at the Raid Mother. Not bad. 
So I'm just gonna lose it anyway. So I think the only line of play I have next turn is to use archaeologist to get back Tormod's crypt and then pop the crypt on Ye olden um Omnath over here. That's a lot of Omnath though. And remember, as long as the original one is out in play, every time these die, someone's going to take three. Hey, Seraph! It's just a shame we can't actually play Seraph. Sikor still doesn't have anything we want, though. So we'll just go ahead, play the crypt, pop it, give us some Malsham stuff for good, and then F6. Now we have no hand, and literally the only thing that can, you know, save us right now is the Keldon Royal Guard. Keldon. Keldorian? Keldorian Royal Guard. What just happened here? Let's see. What just happened? Oh, right! Because it brings the Shadowborn Apostles back to the field. Now, Overseer the Damned? Or not Overseer, uh, Shadowborn Demon? That's actually a pretty nice combo, though, with the Siren and Sanity and the she -Roy. And that's an ass load of zombies. Like, I mean, an approximate ass load. You want to talk about Jun Value? That is some strong Jun Value right there. Hmm. Let's just hope they don't find a way to deal with the moat. Oh, hey. It's a reaper from the abyss. And of course, demons aren't affected by moat. So they're going straight after Maelstrom. Maelstrom has a flyer in the form of the palancron. Not going to help, though. Blocks the Rune Scar Demon. Makes me wish I had saved my Tormod script. I should have known better. I really should have. But I guess we got rid of some important stuff anyway. Ah, uh, so many triggers. I mean, there is something to be said about using the Tormod's Crypt before they use the Shadowboard Apostle so they know they can go ahead and get a demon that can help. Okay, so Deadeye's gone. Again. Apostles are back. Back again. All of them count the friends. I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm seeing. This is bad. All right then. So, gonna go over here. Vanishing counter on the Deadwood Tree folk. Once all three of them have left, boom! That is it. Gone. Finale. Master Water is already on the field. Ah, shoot. I am dead either way, but I think I have to turn off my auto yields. Yeah, I do. Because I need the Keldorn Royal Guard in order to actually live through this turn if Kiki decides to, you know, flicker a Vencer. No, wait, Kiki can't flicker a Vencer. So we're just going to go back to F6ing. And 
hopefully we will not die a horrible death. Because Kiki can't copy a legend. Oh, wait, frack. Yeah, that'll do it. That will absolutely do it. Kiki targeting the Vanisher. So, you know, get back the dead eye. Of course, it's gonna happen regardless, right? Let's see, so. Regrow a creature. Card as soon as that thing dies. Yeah, this is just a very no win situation right now. That geeky need to be dealt with. Got rid of some really good pieces, got rid of the Dead Eye and this Palancron and all that. Problem is though, Kiki's copying something that has a leaves the battlefield trigger. And the copying process has already begun. Hmm. <sighs> Aberrant Overlord is the only one he has. Huh? I mean, it makes sense. The good news is Kiki can't untap. Bad news is Dead Eye Navigator's back. And if mana's open by the time that Reaper trigger goes on, that Dead Eye just isn't going anywhere. Alright, here's the windup. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's did I. Now here's the million dollar question. Who's he gonna pair it up to? He's got two, three, four, five mana right now, so he can't get Palancron back. Looks like paired it up with the Venser. Yeah, this is gonna happen. Alright, so Venser's gonna come back. Unfortunately, the Simon Sandy's gonna get rid of it forever. So we've lost Moat. Okay, that's happening. But the Master Player is down to three and a half minutes left. They don't have time to be derping around like this. And they just enabled a massive zombie army to attack next turn. Uh-oh. What? We just lost our Royal Guard, too. Yeah, we are absolutely dead now. 100% dead. Just super dead. All the dead. Very, very, very dead. So what's he going to swing with? Has to swing with a significant amount if they want, if he wants to kill me. But if he does that, he leaves himself much more open to a zombie horde. Come on. Come on. At least we can activate our force field, right? Yeah. So 
So attacking with everything but the tokens, everything but the elementals that aren't on math. No, not attacking with Mousham. Oh no, I think it's just getting moved around because the Mousham is attacking with tokens. This should be lethal, even with my force field. I haven't actually done the math. This is going to be a hefty portion of my life, though. So. Alright, so what you got for me, love? What you got? What you doing here? What you doing here? No? No? Come on! Um, let's see, we're going to turn off the auto yields. Yep. Alright then. Go, go ahead, use this force field. Uh, a source. Yep, we're just going to force field as much of that as we can. And that's it. We're F6 in here. Hey, we survived! So that, let's see, we stopped 12 points of damage. That 12 points of damage actually saved us. But now we're just dead. We're actually just dead. Oh, well, we're going to make them work for it. Play a workshop. We'll play moat. There's no man open to bounce anything right now. <sighs> we'll just have to see. We're F6th. By all rights, they win this game. I count our first game today as our win because I, you know, if I don't misclick, just everything. Boom. But I'm going to count this as their win. Because honestly, you just can't keep up with a Malsham value train. You really can't. Not with a deck like this. Honestly, I just want to see if he can get there. He's got 20 seconds left. 17, 16, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1, and that's time. That's what you need the attack all option for, bros. GG. Should try. They should. So let's go ahead and call this a wrap up. We're going to go into game three for our last game of the night. We'll see you there.